Welcome to Gulls Cry University Lesson 4. I'm Aaron Sokol and in this episode we're going to learn how to lay out a newspaper page in InDesign. Open up Adobe InDesign. Now before you create or open any files in InDesign, first go to Edit, Preferences, Units and Increments and change the horizontal and vertical measurements to inches. Printed documents are typically measured in inches and that's what we'll want to use when we're working in InDesign. On the welcome screen click on create new document. Click in the boxes and change the values for width to 10.5. and the height to 17. Change the columns number to 5 or however many columns you want to use on your page. Click inside a margins box and change one of the values to 0.375. Now notice that when you change any margins value and click outside of it, all of the other margin values change to match it. That's because they are linked by this chain here. If we want different margin values for different sides of our layout, you can click on this chain to unlink it. Then you can adjust the values separately. 0.375 is what I want though for this for all my sides, so I'm just going to leave that linked and click OK. If you don't want to re-enter all these values every time you create an InDesign file for the Gulls Cry, you can go to File, Save As, and from this drop-down select InDesign CS4 Template. This will make a template file that you can't write over and save it as a unique file that you can launch from every time you want to make a new Gulls Cry page. Alright, now we're ready to start placing stuff on our page. Go to File, Place, or hold control and press D on your keyboard and that's going to open up this called the place box. Double click on the cover header like we created in lesson 3. And now if I move my cursor around you'll notice something hanging off the edge of it. If I click anywhere on the page whatever I selected in the place box is going to drop right on that spot. So now we've got our header placed on the page. If you click and drag the header across the column guides in the document, you'll notice new lines come and go as you cross different parts of the columns. These are smart guides that help you position your objects right where you want them. I want to center this header in the middle of the columns. When I see that magenta line appear in the middle of the page, that means if I drop it there, it will be aligned in the middle. I'm going to drop it right there, and now my header is perfectly centered. Click on the Type tool in the toolbar here, and place the cursor somewhere on this guide. Then click and drag to make a rectangular box over to the other side of the page here until you see it snap to this guide, which is the edge of the inside margin of our page. Click on the selection tool here and that'll get the text tool out of the rectangle we just created. Notice that our frame around the rectangle that we just created is selected. That means we can manipulate it and make changes to it. If we click outside of that box on a blank area, it's going to deselect everything. As long as I have the selection tool, I can select all the objects in an area together by just clicking and dragging a box around them. If you want to deselect or reselect an object, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click on it. If you want to select an object that's underneath another object, hold down the control key on your keyboard and just keep clicking until the one you want is selected. Now that you know how to select things, we'll move our new box back under 
and have it snap to the bottom of our header. With the box selected, we're going to change its height to 0.5 inches by clicking inside this box next to the H and typing in 0.5, then press enter. If you double click inside our box with the move tool, it will automatically transform into the type tool and be ready for business with a flashing cursor. We're going to put the title of our article inside this box. Enter the title of the article inside the box, then click and drag over the text to select it all. Now that we've got our text highlighted, we can resize it by using these up and down arrows, or you can place the cursor right in the box here and enter a size manually. I typically make the text one font size too big so that it can all fit in the box and then I drop it down one so that it fits perfectly snug. If you have the cursor in the font size box, you can also use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to resize your selected text. This is how I usually do it once I get it in the ballpark of where I want it. In this example, 30 was too big a font size, so I backed it down to 29, and that's what it's going to be here. Now that we know how big we want our text, we can shrink the container box down a little by hovering over this box until we get the double-sided arrow, like this, then drag up to cut out some of that extra space from the text box. Click outside of the box to deselect it and click on the line tool in the toolbar. With the line tool selected, we'll place the cursor right on the edge of my guides here, then click and drag all the way to the other side of my column guides. To force InDesign to draw a straight line, hold down the shift key while you drag. The line will snap to the edge of the guides just like our boxes did. Use the up and down arrows on the keyboard to bump the line up to where you want it. Now click on the type tool and make another box. We'll have this box go from the bottom left corner of our page margins to the upper right corner just under our headline. Once it snaps to the outer guides, let go of the mouse button. Click on the selection tool. This box is going to contain our article, so we want to make sure that it lines up correctly with our margin guides. I'll press the Z key on the keyboard to get my zoom tool so we can get a closer look at our margins. Whenever I click and drag around with the zoom tool, I can make marquee selections with the zoom tool to get exactly where I want it to look. Now that I can see it better, I'll snap my new box to the outside column guides and fit the top of the box just under the line we made. We'll select the text tool again and we're going to make another box way out in space here. Just click and drag a box any size. Now click on the move tool to select it. We'll change the width of the box by clicking in here and typing 1.625 and change the height by clicking in here and typing 1.75. Now, drag the resized box into the larger box in the upper left corner of the first column guide. When you see it snap into place at the top middle of the column, let go. This box is going to hold the author's name and picture. We'll go to File, Place. Now we're going to find John Doe's mugshot. There's our author, but that's not where I want him. So I'm going to click on him to select him and line him up in the upper middle of this box. Once we see him snap to the top of the box in the middle of the column, let go of the mouse button, double click inside our box, select 12 point bold text, and type the author's name. I'll put my cursor before John's name and click center align. Then I'll go to the next line, select italic as the text style, and type the author's title. Now we've got our text, but we need it to wrap around the author's picture. Go to Window, Text Wrap, 
and this is going to give us our text wrap control box. If we click this icon, our text will jump underneath the picture. We'll drag this text wrap box over here for the next time we need it. Now the author's name is a little close to the picture, so we're going to select the picture and we're going to adjust how close the text is by clicking these up and down arrows on any of the spacing value. Again, these are linked, so if you change one, you'll change them all, just like the margin settings earlier. But we can unlink them by breaking the chain. That looks better. Now, let's click on the line tool again, and we'll draw a line by clicking and dragging underneath our author's box. Now we can have this line snap to the edges of our mugshot box. Up here, we can change the thickness of a selected line or object. I'm going to change this to a two-point line. Now select the Move tool. We're ready to place the article. We're going to put it in the large box we created earlier. Click anywhere in the middle of the page, and when you see the little guide boxes appear, you'll know you have the right box selected. Go to File, Place, and find the file that has the article in it, then double click on it. The article is on our page, but we have some problems. First, we'll highlight all the text and change the font to Times New Roman, and that's what I usually use for article text. Now, We'll click on the Move tool, select the Writer box, and click on the same icon we used before in the Text Wrap box to make the text wrap around the Writer box. Next, we'll click on our large box with the article in it and right-click on it with the mouse. From this right-click menu, we'll click on Text Frame Options. Once the Text Frame Options box opens up, We'll change the number of columns the article spans by changing this 1 to a 5, or however many columns you want. Hit OK. Now our text is easier to read, broken up into columns, but it's still a little close to this dividing line. So we'll click on that line to select it and go back to the text rack box and we'll click here to make the article text back off a little. That's a lot better. If you don't want this article to take up the entire page, you can resize its text box by dragging up on this little box in the bottom center. Now it's time to add some pictures to our article. Go to File, Place, and find a grayscale picture that you want to use for the article. Double click on it and click again on your page to drop it somewhere inside the article. Now you'll need to resize your picture. First we'll crop the edges a little by dragging any little boxes we need to. And now we'll drag the picture up and use the column guides to snap it to wherever we want. Resize an image proportionally by holding down the shift key and dragging on a corner box diagonally. We want the image to cover two columns in the article, so once we see it snap to the guides at two columns, we're going to let go. Now we can only see part of the image, but we can fix that by having the image selected and clicking on the box up here that says Fit Content Proportionally. You're going to learn to love that option.